الحمد لله وصلاه والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله وعلى اله وصحابته ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم يوم الدين الحمد لله welcome we have some guests this is an honors program so alhamdulillah uh, the honors program is uh, in addition to the actual uh, program which is a cohort program so all the, all the students take the same classes but these are the students that have more himma to do more work and especially do the mutun which are the because the, the the actual program is a liberal arts program w that's rooted in our faith uh, but the the mutun are part of the traditional madrasa system where you actually try to memorize uh, and study these um, didactic texts that are usually um, summa, they're summaries of uh, subjects. So through memorization, you uh, can retain the skeletal, uh, you know, the skeleton of the subject and then flesh it out through the study of the commentaries. And so they become memory pegs really for, for subjects. Um, so these are, as you can see, our ladies have more himma than our men. Uh, this is part of the modern era. We have to accept this fact. So um, pretty soon, the, most of our teachers are probably going to be the ladies. Yeah. So, and, but this is like in the early period of Islam, one of the things that really troubled the Arabs were that the Mawali were becoming the teachers. So it was all these non-Arabs that were becoming Muslim, and then they, they ended up taking the, and so some of the, the khulafa would like, they were really troubled by that, because like, you know, we were their teachers, and now we're sitting at their feet, and one of the early scholars, he said, this is Allah's fadl, he gives it to whomever he pleases, but it's really given to the one that has the himma uh, to take it on uh, himself. So uh, we're doing something called Qurut al Absar, which is a beautiful text. I taught it in Medina. It was really one of the great experiences of my life teaching this text in Medina. But uh, Qurut al Absar, you know, the Arabs say, uh, you know, Aqarallahu uh, Ainik. The Arabs believe that the, the, the tears of joy are cool tears and the tears of suffering are hot tears. So the, uh, the, uh, Qarir al Ain is somebody who has joy in their, their, their eyes. So Qurrat al Absar is the delight of the eyes in the Prophet's days and nights, or the eyes' delights in the Prophet's days and nights. That's what I titled it, because the Arabs like those type of titles, Sajak. Um, the Arabs invented rap, by the way. It's not, it's not an American invention. They, they were doing rap centuries ago. So, uh, and very similar, like, putting down other tribes and things. <laughs> they had rap contests, you know, and so they'd get out and do a slam, what do they call them? <laughs> yeah, rap battles, yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, Nabigha the Biani, he's called Nabigha because he was like 12 years old and he was the best one their tribe had. And when you read his early stuff, it's very childish, but it's, it's funny because it's, it's very similar. So, but because we're in Rajab, which is one of the holy months of our tradition, there's a khiraf about whether these Hurm months maintain the type of sanctity they had. Some of the ulama say that the Hurm months were to prepare the Muslims for the idea of sanctity. Um, and, but they did keep the, the, the sacred months, which is really unusual because one of the beauties of the sacred months is that they had no fighting in them. So it was a time where they could do a lot of things because uh, the Arabs were very, I mean, they, ha they were very, um, you know, I don't want to say superstitious, but they definitely had a recognition of what the Greeks understood, that the Furies could be unleashed on people. So, you know, the Greeks had this idea of the Furies. Um, and so if you were, if you were uh, impious, if, if, you, if you broke the sanctity of something, there were, there were, there were consequences uh, to that uh, from the unseen world. And so the, the idea of nemesis could be unleashed on you. And so the Arabs understood that. Like they, they understood that there, there, there was a cause and effect relationship uh, to behavior. Um, and, 
And so even though they intercalated the months, so they would like do things to extend the fighting for a few days, but generally they honored the months. And so Rajab al-Fard is the one that's the outlier. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a blessed month. And the Prophet ﷺ um, uh, fasted in, in the month more than other months. Uh, Ibn Ashr, he says, uh, uh, that, that fasting is an, an obligation in Ramadan, but it's actually mandub in Rajab and Sha'ban more than any other uh, of the other months. So in light of that, I thought we could look at the, uh, the Isra and the Mi'raj because this is the month that our Prophet ﷺ was shown the unseen world and uh, it's, uh, it's, there's an entire chapter uh, uh, entitled the, uh, the Isra. It's also called Banu Isra'il, which is very interesting because there are many very interesting things. It begins, uh, with the explanation of the Isra, but then it goes directly goes into the fact that Bani Israel, the Judaists, will um, be elevated in, in, in the earth twice, two times. And traditionally, they thought it was during the time of uh, Suleiman and afterwards, uh, Suleiman establishes David and his, his son, they establish this extraordinary uh, Judaic empire. But then, but then it, it became corrupt, like empires tend to do. Uh, and then the, the Persians were sent to rain uh, uh, tribulation upon them, uh, and their temple was destroyed. Uh, and temple is a perfectly valid, really the Kaaba should be called in English the temple of a god, because Beit in Arabic does not just mean house. Uh, in Hebrew and Arabic, it also means a temple, you know, a place where, where God is worshipped. Um, but, you know, it was translated into English early as the house of God, which it, there, it's kind of, there's an iham there. Uh, it lends uh, a kind of suspicion that what, does God live there? Right? And so the, uh, but anyway, the, what's called the Temple Mount today in English is Beit al-Maqdis, which in Hebrew, it's, it's, it's also called Beit, Beit al-Maqdis. I mean, uh, Ali Atai is not here, so he would pronounce it properly. But it means the Holy Temple. And temple in English means a place of devotion where it could be a, like the pagans have temples, right? But in our tradition, it would be a place solely where God is worshipped. And when, when uh, the Emperor Titus, who destroyed the Temple Mount, uh, are what we call the Haram Sharif, the, the noble sanctuary, when he came into it, uh, he, he went to, to what, what's now... Uh, called the, uh, it's, it's uh, Masjidu Dawood, which is where the, the rock is. And, and when Sayyidina Omar came into Jerusalem, uh, it's a very famous story. Um, he was convinced by the people in Sham, Muawiyah was there, uh, and others were in Sham, and he was convinced to take off his muraqa uh, because he, he wore a, uh, like what the dervishes uh, where in some uh, places he wore a patched robe and he had over 70 patches on it and they said no, no these people they don't respect this type of uh, they they have ubaha you know they they like everything has to be pomp and circumstance and so Omar was convinced to put on a new robe which he did but then he he had he was troubled by it so he took it off put on, put back on his his uh, patched robe and uh, they actually, the Christians recognized him because in their, in their text they said that, that, that they would hand the keys over to a man in a patched robe. Uh, and so it, it ended up fulfilling actually a prophecy, which is really amazing. Um, but he went in with Ka'b al-Ahbar. Ka'b al-Ahbar, who's, who, who's not really appreciated in the Shia tradition, but in the Muslim, uh, the Sunni tradition, no, they're both Muslim, but in the Sunni tradition, he is a very interesting uh, character, but he, he had knowledge of the Jewish scripture. And so Omar went in with him into Jerusalem. And believe it or not, the, 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 the holy sanctuary, the Haram Sharif, was used as a um, garbage dump for the people of Jerusalem. So they literally put the, the Christians put their garbage up there. 
So the first thing he did was he cleaned it with his soldiers. And himself, he, he participated in it, which is the work of a true leader. Uh, he rolls up his sleeves with his uh, soldiers. And, uh, and he cleaned it. And then Ka'b al-Ahbar showed him where uh, the Masjid of Dawood was. And this is where, uh, so you have the Masjid al-Aqsa, which is where the Prophet led all the prophets in prayer. But then you have the Dome of the Rock. And so he placed, he, he, he built a masjid, and that was the beginning of it. And, and what's extraordinary about the Dome of the Rock also, which is where the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Mi'raj uh, happened, what's extraordinary about the Dome of the Rock is um, that, well, first of all, the rocks are very mysterious. You know, the Arabs call them al khawadid al samma you know, the deaf immortals. And rocks have been worshipped throughout history because they have a permanence that nothing else in the world seems to have. So they, rep they, they represent a kind of tajalli of khulud. And, and so rocks are, are very interesting. And, and uh, the, you know, the, the Kaaba is a house of stones. And the, and the black stone, which was really a white stone, is, it represents the hand of God, the yameen Allah fit ard. That's why we kiss it like you would kiss a king's hand. So, so stones are very interesting, and the Arabs did worship stones. Uh, but that what they were really worshiping was that idea of immortality. You know, that that's, it's the permanence of the stone that mesmerizes uh, people. Um, so, but the, uh, what, what's fascinating is th these are like, uh, to use, and this is just, you know, I'm, I'm just... You just, it's like a wormhole. So, so the Prophet ﷺ, there's a riwayah that when he was in, 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 the, in the, the cave with Abu Bakr, عنه, the spider had spun the web. I mean, there's some weakness in some of these narrations, but they're still very fascinating. Um, and and tradition, our, our tradition did not have problems like today, as long as it wasn't related to a hukum. You know, if it, if, if it was a hukum, then, you know, you want a, a sahih thing because you're, or aqida, then you want mutawatir, really. So, but, but if, it's, if it's, you know, stories that, that increase people's faith and relate to uh, the Prophet's life, I mean, much of the seerah is, 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 doesn't have the rigor that the, um, that the hadith tradition has. In any case, in this tradition, Abu Bakr was with the Prophet and Abu Bakr, you know, he was terrified because outside of him, here's this famous tracker who's like looking and there's a spider's web and, the, and, and Abu Bakr is, is he's looking at the Prophet and the, and the Prophet turned to the end of the, the cave, which is a rock. It's a big rock. So a cave is a hole in a rock. And, and he saw the shores of Jeddah. So there was, there was an exit strategy. So, so it's very interesting that, you know, the, the, where the prophet rises was on a stone uh, to, to, to the, the, the Mi'raj. So what's called the, what, what the Jews know as Jacob's Ladder, it's also, it's all the prophet's ladder because all the prophets have the Mi'raj, right? So the ladder he saw, at that place um, where he ascends. So, so, so the surah begins, it's the 17th surah in the Quran, it begins, Subhana ladhi asra bi abdihi laylan. What's really fascinating about this is it begins with tanzih. So in Arabic, Subhanallah is unazihullah. And it comes from a word that is related to bu'd, like distancing. So it's what we would call um, transcendent is God. God is ta'ala Allah. He's beyond any comprehension. Allah is beyond anything the human mind can conceive of. Kullu ma khatara bi barika, Allahu khilafu dharika. Whatever occurs to your mind, Allah is other than that occurrence. And so when Allah begins, he could have begun alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, asra bi abdi. But he said, Subhanallah, asra bi abdi. In order for you to remove any concept of a physical journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that, that you're visiting him like you would go to a house, 
This Allah is beyond place. Allah is creator of place. So it's undeniable that Allah took his servant on a journey. But this journey, which the first part is a clearly physical journey, and the second part is has some physicality to it undeniably. But once Allah, the Prophet enters into what, what he called the lama, the mist, which is beyond human comprehension, Allah is letting us know Subhanalladhi asra bi'abdi that this is ta'alallah amma yasifun. Do not think that Allah is in a place and there's some kind of direction and physicality. Because if Allah is in a place, it means he's contained. If he's contained, he's not infinite. So we have to remove all of these ideas from our mind. And that's why it begins Subhanalladhi asra bi'abdi laylan. Now also, why laylan? Because uh, Isra is a night journey. In the Arabic language, that if, if Saraytu means I traveled by night. So Allah says, Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi Laylan, because he's going min al Masjid al Harami ila al Masjid al Aqsa. Right? So he's going from this Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa, right? That Allah that Allah put this barakah in this place. He's going to the Masjid al-Aqsa, from the Masjid al-Haram to the Masjid al-Aqsa. So it's saying this night journey is Laylan. It's 40 nights in one night. So it's Laylan in a night. And he used Nakira because this is to indicate that this is not a normal night journey. This is a night journey that the Arabs could not conceive of. In fact, Abu Jahal when he heard that the Prophet ﷺ had traveled from the Haram to, um, to, uh, to Masjid al-Aqsa, he actually said, you know, أَلَا تَعْجَبُونَ بِمَا قَالَ Muhammadun, Don't you think this is ridiculous? I mean, here he means really ridiculous. Don't you think it's, I mean, aren't you like wondering? What, you know, isn't this ridiculous? He said he traveled in, a, in, in one night, what takes us a month, right? So now, you could go by jet from, from, from Medina to Masjid al-Aqsa in probably a, you know, one of these F-16s. You could probably do it in like 10 minutes or something. Not two hours. It would be shorter than that. You know? So, so we, now we know that you can make a, a month's journey in, 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 uh, in an hour, in an instant. So... so in order for us to reveal to him our signs. I mean, very interesting, Sami al Basir, because where is that? What's another ayah? You know, it's in the ayah of Tanzi. That's the ultimate Surah al Shura. That is the ultimate ayah of Tanzi. So this is where the Prophet ﷺ is going on this journey. And so this is a journey. So, I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, I'm going to read just a couple of, uh, of, um, uh, of the hadith about this. Um, so... So, uh, the first one is, uh, this is the, one of the strongest hadiths, Hamad ibn Salama, an Thabit, an Anasin, fa innahu jawwadahu wa atqanahu, fa salima mimma fi ghayrihi min ta'arud. So, the, the, the isra is mujma'alay. Like, if you read, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the Isra is mujma'alay. If you reject the Isra, you're, you're not a Muslim. Because it's in the Quran. If you say it was a vision, it's, it's a bid'ah. It's, it's a heretical belief, but it doesn't take you out of Islam. You know, so if somebody believes that it was a vision, it doesn't take them out of Islam. But we believe it was in the body. Uh, first of all, the ruh is not carried, right? The ruh uh, is, is, you know, 
the ruh has a tasarruf that, that the body doesn't have, which is why you can go places in, the, in your dreams. You can go to whole countries. I, I had a Mauritanian student that I studied with in Tuemarat. And he used to go like to Switzerland and he would tell me, he was going to Switzerland. He said they had electric uh, stairs. <laughs> he really wanted to travel. He ended up traveling too, but he really wanted to travel. But he used to go on his dreams. People dream dreams. They go to places in their dreams that they can't go. There's all these people now, right now, dreaming. There's people in countries they can't leave that are dreaming of going somewhere else. Yeah. So there are some differences in the narrations, and partly is because we forget that the Sahaba are human beings with memories like we have. There are many hadiths where they say, they'll say, I think, I think he said this. Um, there's a very famous hadith where the Prophet got up at uh, Fajr and did, uh, he spoke to the companions until Dhuhr, they prayed Dhuhr, and then he started speaking again, then they prayed Asr, he spoke, he spoke from Fajr until Maghrib, and they said that he told them every single fitna that would happen in his ummah. And he said, Some of us memorized it, other ones forgot it. And uh, Abu Hurairah said, I used to see things and then I would remember. Oh, don't you remember he told us about that? That they would remember. Like so that you jog your memory, things, events, jog your memory. Like Aisha, when she heard the dogs bark, then she remembered the Prophet told her that one of the wives would be, be hear the dogs bark, they would be on the wrong side. And she wanted to go back, but it was too late. They told her, no, we have to keep going. She realized that she was on, she was against uh, Sayyidina Ali and it was the wrong side. Yeah. So, so, they, so they did forget, and, and so there are differences, but part of the beauty of our tradition, the, the, the hadith as, as a compendium is mahfoul, but individual hadiths are not. Not like the Qur'an. The Qur'an is 100% mahfud. It's mutawatir. There's and, and the miracle of the Qur'an, we know it from the rasam, we know it from the, the recensions. I mean, we have 10, ten qira'at, 14 with the ahad, and then many, many shudud qira'at. But, but, and then each one of those qira'at have uh, uh, recensions. So, warsh and, and uh, qalun an nafi' And then Warsh and Qanun also have, like Warsh has Azraq and Asfahani. So they're, they're, you, you, you reach over 50. But their Qira'at, uh, they don't differ from the Rasam. And when they, when, they, when they differ based on the Mu'jama letters and the, the you know, what they call Nuqat al-Arab wal ijam when they differ on those, the Furush, uh, then there are for subtle differences of meaning. They always add some dimension. But the rasam is the same. It's one of the miracles of the Qur'an. So Qur'an is mutawatir. You cannot, and even the Orientals who've attempted to undermine the Qur'an, in the end, most of them have submitted to the fact that the Qur'an is a preserved book. The Hadith, on the other hand, does not have the preservation that the Qur'an has. So there are many fabricated Hadith that got in there. A lot of them are actually just hikam, their wisdoms that, that uh, got into the hadith. Um, the, the Arabs say uh, that al ma'idatu baytu da wal himyatu ra'su dawa. The stomach is the seat of illness and uh, diet is the source of healing. That was Al Harith ibn Kalada, but it's attributed to the Prophet. And you'll see it in many of the Tud books attributed to the Prophet. And there are many examples of that. The other thing, all the muhaddithun uh, were attacked by other muhaddithun. Or, so you'll always find ta'an uh, in, 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 in the hadith. So, so sometimes when you read a hadith, it'll say, oh, this hadith is munkar, or it's da'if, or it's this or that. It might be according to one, but according to another, it might be uh, a good hadith. So you have to be very careful, um, students, when they study. Because, the, you know, and that was something that I did when I was very young. I, I was studying with a, a man, Hisham al-Araf. He was a very nice man. He was actually the, uh, he taught me a lot of Arabic, but he was the, um, he was the, uh, the student, he was a student, Nasr al-Albani, uh, who was a, a Syrian muhaddith, originally from Albania. 
But anyway, um, so I, I lived with him because I had to get out of the dorms, and I was going nuts with these young kids in the dorms. Um, and, and, and so he, he invited me to stay with him. Um, but he was a very serious student of Islam. But he was Salafi, and he had, uh, his, his uncle was Araf al-Araf, very famous Palestinian historian. So anyway, I was learning all these things. Oh, that's a hadith da'if, and that's a hadith. Oh, don't take that, don't take that. And I was with the Yemenis once. And I was just a very beginning student. And I was with the Yemenis once, and somebody quoted a hadith. I said, oh, that's a da'if hadith. And uh, Habib Hadi al-Haddad just pulled me over. He said, who said so? <laughs> And then I, I told him, he said, no, no, no. He said, you, you have a long way to go before you can make those kind of judgments. So that was a little lesson in humility. Yeah. So be, be careful with the hadith. A hadith also that's weak means that it got a C. You don't throw a C out. That's a passing grade. It might have got a D if it's a da'if jiddan, but it's still a C or a D. It's not an F. That's called maldu'a. That you throw out. And even you don't even throw it out. You just don't consider it from the Prophet ﷺ because it might have wisdom in it. You know, the Arabs say, uh, You know, take wisdom even if it's graffiti on the wall. Like I was in uh, Canada's airport and there was a big sign. My wife and I were coming, uh, getting on a plane. There's a big sign that said, the most important project you will work on this year is yourself. It's like, well, that's a good message. That's the most important project you'll work on your whole life. <laughs> it's not just this year. But it, you have to start sometime, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so here, this hadith, عن ثابت البناني عن أنس رضي الله عنه أن رسول And Anas is the servant of the Prophet I mean, He wasn't a slave, but he, his, his mother took him and wanted him to uh, to, to be raised by the Prophet And so Anas uh, ibn Malik, would, you know, he served the Prophet, but he also, he becomes one of the great muhadithun. He, he, he relates a lot of hadith, and, and he's, because he was so young also, his memory was really like Aisha. I mean, that's part of the secret of Aisha, being young, was her memory was phenomenal. She had almost a photographic memory, um, which is, you know, that's when you're young, so... Uh, utilize it before it go. it does go, right? With the old, what the old, the oldsters amongst us know this truth. It's a lot harder to memorize, and even if it's not, it doesn't stay in the same way. The Arabs say, uh, like like uh, that. You know, when you, memorizing when you're young is like carving in stone, but memorizing when you're old is like painting on water. So he says, Sallallahu uh, Utitu bir Burak. The Burak was brought to me, and it's Jib Jibril السلام, who bought it. Now, uh, brought it. Now, Burak is from Barq. It's the same root, Baraka, which means to flash, but it, it's lightning. So the Burak is a vehicle in which the movement was to the horizon in just one step. So this is a very, very fast, like lightning fast, which lightning is the speed of light. So maybe it was moving at the speed of light. It was a dabba, the Arabs use for anything that walks on the earth that's alive. The ant is a dabba, dabba ard is a termite. You know, we're dabba, mamin dabbatan. You know, there's no dabba in the earth except the provision is on God. So dabba is anything dabba yadibbu dabiban, is anything that moves on the earth. Right? Uh, so it was an it was a, a animal that was white, tawilun, fawq al himar, wadun al baghli. So it was it was bigger than a donkey, but less than a mule. And the mule, which is a, you know, it's 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 part donkey, part horse, right? So, so the faras, it's always a male, a female horse, but a, but a male donkey, right? And uh, and so the, the the Arabs actually honor the baghla, the himar, you know, they use it as a curse. Yeah, himar, you know, like you donkey, 
but uh, the, the baghla is something. So it's, it's bigger than a himar, it's bigger than a donkey, but less than a, than a baghla. يَضَعُ حَافِرُهُ عَنْدَ مُنْتَهَا طَرْفِهِ so, so it, it places its hafir, the hafir to the, to the horse or the donkey or the bagla is like the hand, the hand, the foot to the human being. So it's what we'd call a hoof. Hoof. Yeah, hafir. The Arabs say for the students of Arabic, you know, to al hafir, you know, I came on time, like at the right time, on the foot. قَالَ فَرَكِبْتُهُ حَتَّى أَتَيْتُ بَيْتَ الْمَقْدِسِ I rode it until I arrived at Beit al-Maqdis, which is the, 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 the sanctuary, which means the, the sacred temple, the sacred uh, house, sacred place of worship. فَرَبَطْتُهُ بِالْحَلْقَةِ So halqa, there, there was a ring, and there's actually a wall in Jerusalem called uh, the, the wall of the Buraq, which is where the Prophet Rabata at Buraq, right? Near the, you know, what they call the Wailing Wall, so so so. You know, the the ulama took from this that the Prophet even though this is a sacred beast, that Allah has sakharaha, the Nabi subjugated to the Prophet and he's with Jibril, he still went with the asbab, iqal wa tawakkal, tie your animal and trust in God. And so he tied the animal. So there's big ishara in always taking the asbab. So he prayed, this is called tahiyat al-masjid. When you come into a masjid or a musalla, it's always good to pray to, to greet the masjid before you. Even when you go to the masjid of the Prophet you greet the masjid first. There is also Tahiyat al Wudu, which the Prophet did, which is when you finish Wudu, it's good to do two rakats just for, for the Wudu. Thumma kharajtu fajaani Jibreel alayhi salam bi ina'an min khamrin wa ina'an min laban. So Jibreel brought me a, a, a ina, which is a vessel, a drinking vessel, with wine and one with laban. Fa'akhtartu labana. I chose the milk. There's one riwayah where he looked at Jibril and Jibril indicated the milk, which the ulama say again, no one will ever go astray if they take advice from somebody wise. It's always good to take advice. But in this one, he chose the milk. You chose the fitra, which means what's sahla. You chose what's natural. Because a child, if you give a child wine or alcohol, I mean wine or milk, if, if it tastes the wine, it's going to reject the wine. Wine's what they call, quote unquote, an acquired taste. <laughs> milk, everybody loves milk. You have to, unless you're lactose intolerant. But, but they like milk. Babies love milk, right? That's the first thing that we latch on to is, is milk. And so the Prophet chose milk because uh, it's the fitra. So the fitra is what fitratullah lati fatara nas alayha, right? In Surah al rum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is the fitra of Allah. Alati fatara nas alayha la tabdila li kharqila. There's a khilaf about that la, but I think the soundest one is, is a nahi. Do not change this fitra because you can alter the fitra. Like th what's happening to these people now, all of what we're seeing out in this so-called enlightened civilization is the taghir of the fitra, perversion of the natural fitra of people. So Allah is telling us, لا تبديل لي خلق لا فطرة الله التي فطر الناس عليها. This is the fitra. Allah is al-fatir, fatir al-samawat wal-ard. He's the originator. Allah is the originator of this fitra. So he created us on this fitra, and this is we're supposed to protect that. For those of you that like um, Cormac McCarthy, you know, he wrote a book called The Road. It's a very interesting kind of apocalyptic novel, but it's about a man protecting a child on the road. And a lot of people see it as a dark novel, but I really saw it as it, it was about 
protecting this innocence that we have, you know. That children have an innocence when they come into the world, and it's the worst thing a human being can do, worse than murder, as far as I'm concerned, is defile a child. Because you destroy that fitra, you destroy the innocence, the trust. It's, it's the ultimate betrayal. And that's why Iblis, you know, that's, that's Iblis. So, so, so the fitra is something you have to guard in yourself. Children are naturally modest, generally. I mean, it's very rare. You, you do get shame, shameless children, but, uh, and there, there are reasons for that, generally. But children are naturally modest and maintain that, cultivating that. Women have more modesty than men do by, na by fitra. This is a simple fact. Um, so, so it's very important. So he chose the fitra. And just a little waqf ala akhtart al fitra. The word in Arabic, akhtara, like the Prophet al Mukhtar, is one of his names. Akhtara is to choose. But if you look at the root, it's from khayara. And khayr is good. So choice is always the choice of the good. Like the human beings, by our nature, we want to choose the good. But there are real goods and apparent goods. In this case, the real good was the, 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 the milk. The apparent good was the wine. And so the Prophet ﷺ was being tested. Had he chosen wine, we would have a lot of alcoholics in our ummah. And that's part of the secret of the Isra and the Mi'raj. Because he doesn't choose certain things. And had he chosen them, they would have affected his ummah. He is covetous, solicitous of, of your well-being. The Prophet cares about us. And then they went to the, the Sama Dunya. So the Sama Dunya is, is this, it's this universe. Like everything up is Sama Dunya. We haven't seen the other Samawats. This is all Sama Dunya. So, 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 Talab al al Fatah asked for it to be open. Faqida manant. So here's the Haris. So there's angels at each of the of the heavens, and so the angel says, manant, and that's the role of the uh, of the, the 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 person who guards the door. Who are you? Like if you go to any place where rulers are, it doesn't matter. You have to show your ID. You have to do, even if they know you, you're going to, they're going to, who are you? You have to prove who you are. So he's asked, who are, and he, he says, Jibreel, qida wa man ma'ak, who's with you? Qara Muhammadun, qida wa qad bu'itha ilay. Has, has he been sent? Because other prophets have gone through the heavens. So has he been sent? قَالَ بُعِثَ إِلَيْهِ فَفُتِحَ لَنَا فَإِذَا أَنَا بِآدَمَ So I was with Adam. So Adam is, is Abuna Adam. It's our father, Adam. So Adam is, some say it's related in Hebrew to dam, you know, blood, because we're, we, you know, we're made and we have this blood. But, but it's also Adam at Ard. Like the topsoil of the earth is called Udma. So Adam is... Adam was created from all the so top soil of the earth. So he was created from white soil, from black soil, from brown soil, from yellow soil, from red soil. So you're going to see all the colors of the different soils of the earth that are in the first human being. So all this genetic diversity is from Adam's creation. So, so then, so he asked... Uh, so then he sees uh, Adam alayhi salam, and he says, "Farhaba uh, bi." He tarheeb the Arabs, you know, tarheeb marhaba. You know, the Arabs say marhaba. It's a beautiful word. So rahaba sadr is somebody who has a, a magnanimous, a big chest. Like they, 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 they take things easily. Tarheeb is to, to make it roomy. When people want to make you comfortable, tafaddal, you know, marhaban. It's, there's a lot of space here. Don't feel constricted. Ahlan wa sahlan. 
Ahlan, wajata ahlan, you found your family. Wata'ta sahlan, you're on easy ground now. So marhaban is to let them know that marhaban, yurahibu bi. So this is a tarheeb. Wada'a li bi khair. And then he said, he, he prayed for me. The, the, the Prophet Adam prayed for our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he sought for it to be open. Faqida manant, who are you? Faqara Jibreel. Qida wa man ma'ak, who, who's with you? Qara Muhammadun. Qida wa qad bu'itha ilay, is he, has he been sent? Qara bu'itha ilay, fa futiha lana, fa idha ana bibnay al-khaliti. Bibnay al-khaliti. Isa ibn Maryam. Wa yahya bibnay al-khaliti, Isa ibn Maryam. Wa yahya ibn Zakariya. Farahaba bi, wa da'u li bi khair. So then he, he says, I was with the, the two uh, sons of, of you know, their, their Abna Khala, because Ishba' is the mother of, um, of uh, Yahya, alayhi salam. And then Mary is the sister. So Elizabeth and Mary are sis Mary and Elizabeth are sisters. So Yahya is the son of Ishba', she's called Ishba' in Hebrew, Elizabeth, and then Mary is the, yeah, so these are the two uh, cousins, Isa ibn Maryam and Yahya ibn Zakaria. فَرَحَّبَ بِي وَدَعُوا لِي بِخَيْرِ ثُمَّ عَرَجَ بِي إِلَى السَّمَاءَ الثَّارِثَ Then he went to the third, فَاسْتَفْتَحَ So Jibreel sought to have it opened. قِيلَ مَنَنْتْ فَقَالَ جِبْرِيلُ قِيلَ مَنْ مَعَكَ قَالَ مُحَمَّدٌ قِيلَ وَقَدْ بُعِثَ إِلَيْ Was he sent? قَالَ قَدْ بُعِثَ إِلَيْ فَفُتِحَ لَنَا فَإِذَا أَنَا بِيُوسُفِ فَإِذَا هُوَ قَدْ أُعْطِيَ شَطْرَ الْحُسْنِ فَرَحَّبَ بِي وَدَعَ لِي بِخَيْرِ And I was suddenly with Joseph and, and he was given half of the beauty of the, you know, just like, I mean, they said مَا هَذَا بَشَرَا The women, when they saw, they, they're like cutting their fruit and they ended up cutting their wrists because he was so stunningly uh, beautiful. So, uh, so he, he again, Rahab, uh, with the Prophet and then prayed for him. Then he goes to the fourth heaven. So the same. And then he says the, the same. And then he says, Idris. He's in a high place, Idris. This is Enoch, who was given the art of writing many, many gifts. Uh, Idris brought into the world many arts. Same. And then he's now he's in the fifth heaven. فَإِذَا أَنَا بِهَارُون He's with Harun. فَرَحَّبَ right. بِي وَدَعَى Same thing. ثُمَّ عَرَجَ بِنَا إِلَى السَّمَاءَ السَّادِسَ Same thing. And then he's, he says, it's open. So he's with Musa. Same. He prays for him. ثُمَّ عَرَجَ بِنَا إِلَى السَّمَاءَ السَّابِعَى Now he's in the seventh heaven. Same thing. And then he says, فَفُتِحَ لَنَا فَإِذَا أَنَا بِإِبْرَاهِيمٌ مُسْنِدًا ظَهْرَهُ إِلَى الْبَيْتِ الْمَعْمُورِ So the Bayt al-Ma'mur is the heavenly Bayt. You have the Kaaba and then the Bayt al-Ma'mur is the heavenly Bayt. So Ibrahim is مُسْنِدًا ظَهْرَهُ He's resting up against the Bayt al-Ma'mur. And he says, وَإِذَا هُوَ يَدْخُرُهُ كُلَّ يَوْمًا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلَكٍ Every day 70,000 angels come. They don't come back. So it's con this is how the untold number of angels. It's very interesting, the Sidra. So this is, the Arabs have Sidr. The best honey in the world is the Asal of Sidr. And uh, the Yemenis pride themselves in this. It's a very special honey. Like uh, Asal Du'an. You know, if you go to Wadi Du'an, there's a famous Asal there. So I have this honey that was given to me by a sheikh. And, and I, you know, I, the Prophet said, he, he once fed people and he told the woman not to look in the pot because she was worried. 
and because there were so many people, he said, "Don't look in the pot." And and so so he she kept feeding, and then she fed the last person, and then she wanted to check. So she looked; it was empty. Had she never looked, I think she would have kept the rest of her life. But but so so what I did with this honey, I wrapped it so I never look at it. It still has honey in it. I just pour it out, and I never look at it. And, uh, and I actually think one of the reasons why time goes so fast is because we have watches everywhere, and we're always looking at our watch. Like if you just left watches like pre-modern people did, I think there'd be a lot more baraka in the time. But the fact that we're so obsessed with the passage of time, what time is it? Every time we look at the watch, it's like baraka is taken out of the time. Yeah, because the uh, people that are on what they call polychronic time, you know, anthropologists, uh, have this thing called polychronic time and monochronic time. So polychronic time is where time is not as linear as we would have it here. So like if you're in Mauritania, people, sometimes they'll measure time by juz. So they'll say, I'll meet you two juz after asar. You know, so, so but, but it, Islamic time is very natural time. We go by the lunar ca calendar, not the solar. Solar is fixed. Lunar is always changing. There's, and then we also, the prayers expand and contract. So during the winter, the days are short, the nights are long. During, you know, so it's, time is mysterious in that way. And we've all experienced the baraka of time. You go to Medina and it's like, you know, you go pray Fajr and then you read the al Khirat. And, and it's it's not even shuruq yet, you know. Like how how's that possible, you know? Or the amount of Quran you can read, and then, and then and then like you feel like you've been up for like eight hours, and it's it's like eight o'clock in the morning. I mean, I th I think most of you have had that experience. So it's just one of the secrets of baraka, you know, because it baraka means to descend. So when the baraka comes down. And that's why the food, you never eat from the middle of the plate because the baraka is, is, that's where it's descending. That's why one of the worst things about the West, and, and something I regret for the young ladies here when you have children, one of the worst things that I regret is not eating from one plate with my children. Because when I became Muslim, it was one of the things that I really loved about uh, the people I became Muslim with. They always ate from one plate. And I guarantee you, you would not have the type of obesity that you have in this culture if people ate from one plate. And, and one of the most beautiful answers the Prophet ever gave, I mean, all his answers were beautiful. One of my favorite answers is uh, when he was asked which, which food he liked the best, which plate, they asked him which, which plate did you like the best, you know, meaning what, what type of food did you like the best. And he said, the one that has the most hands in it. Just such a beautiful expression of somebody who, it's, it's not about the food, it's about being human and eating together. Because one of the things that Western people do, they eat alone, and it's such a horrible thing. Like the Arabs would never eat alone. The Jahili Arabs, they would, they would rather go hungry than eat alone. Uh, in fact, Abdul Muttalib, when he was on journeys and he was forced to eat alone, he would put a rock up and he would take a morsel and throw the morsel to the rock. And he'd have a conversation with the rock. And one of the things, Sheikh Khatri, when he came here from Mauritania, he said that the worst thing about this place, he said people spend too much time alone. So it's really important to eat together, but having, you know, family eating from one plate. And one of the nice things about eating from one plate is that, um, you know, it's a little bit like countries. So you have your space. Like when you eat from one plate, everybody knows. Like, and so when you start encroaching on other people's territory, like you slow down until they catch up. And this is a fact. I mean, I've seen this. So uh, it's a very interesting. But anyway... Um, so uh, the Sidrat al-Muntaha is a very interesting concept because the, the, I got off on Sidr honey. The Sidrat al-Muntaha is 
uh, it's, the, it's the extent, it's where human consciousness stops. So beyond that, there's, there, it's ineffable. You cannot explain. The Prophet could say everything up to that point, and after that, awha ila rabbihi ma awha. God revealed to him what he revealed. There's, there's, there's no words to describe what happens at the Sidrat al-Muntaha. But he got there. In, 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 it is an Arabic word. Uh, 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 it's, it's, I mean, some of these words come out of Hebrew, but it's an Arabic word, and, and the sidr is the nabaq, fruits, you know, it's, it's called the jujube uh, in, uh, in English, and, and it's actually a sacred tree in many cultures. Romulus, who's the founder of Rome, was said to have planted the, uh, the sidr tree in Rome, uh, and, and uh, when he founded the city as a sacred tree. Uh, the Chinese hold it sacred, the Indians hold it sacred. There are many cultures that the Sidra is a sacred tree. So this is obviously an otherworldly Sidra, it's not the Sidra of the dunya, but, but it is a Sidra tree. The Muntaha is, it's Mubtada is the beginning, Muntaha is the end. So it's the Sidra and Muntaha is the furthest, it's the low tree of the furthest limit beyond which uh, we're out of uh, anything that is, uh, can be articulated. The, the, the leaves were like the ears of elephants. So it had these beautiful uh, leaves. And, and, and the fruit was like the qilan. The qulla is a, is a large container of water. So the nabaq fruit is actually a beautiful fruit. But he's saying that they were like a qulla. It was, they were like large, like the qulla. وَقَالَ فَلَمَّا غَشِيَهَا مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ مَا غَشِيَ تَغَيَّرَتْ فَمَا أَحَدٌ مِنْ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ يَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ يَنْعَتَهَا مِنْ حُسْنِهَا So when this, you know, عَلَاهَا وَغَطَّاهَا مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Right? So this is when the Prophet ﷺ was he enters into this realm that again is inevitable, uh, you know, no one can describe what, what took place uh, of, and, and the beauty of this tree. He revealed to me what he revealed. It's not something that can be articulated. So he uh, made incumbent upon the Prophet ﷺ and obviously his community 50 prayers in every day and night. I went back and then this is obviously the sixth and Moses ﷺ and he tells him What did your Lord... So Musa had this journey before. This is revelation. So he wanted to know what what did he what did he make uh, an obligation and this is when the sharia comes you see the, the 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 beauty and i didn't talk about this before but the beauty of the isra and the mi'raj is that it comes at the lowest point of the prophet's life so this is amal huzan it follows the the loss of abu talib who who was his defender and protector outwardly, and Khadija, who was his defender and protector inwardly. So he's lost his outward source of solace and his inward source of solace. And then he goes to Beni Thaqif, hoping that they'll, they'll protect him. So he's doing the asbab. This is all asbab. I mean, he's with Allah. But he's doing the asbab, and this is being human. So he goes, and Bani Thaqif, it's the worst time. The, even the, the slaves and the children throw rocks. His feet are bloodied. And then that's when he's offered to destroy them. And he won't do it. And, and then he makes that amazing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that abuthu, you know. I, 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 I abuthu shakwai ilayk. Like I... I, my shakwa is to you. And this is the, the prophets, they don't complain to creation. 
they complain to the creator. They don't complain to people. Like, we love to complain. Humans love to complain. Woe is me. That, that's just like, and, and then they love to dump their problems on you. The prophets don't do that. Sabrun jameel. Isbir sabran jameela. Sabrun jameel wallah musta'an. So this is, it's said twice in Surah Yusuf, and then the Prophet was commanded to have sabr jameel, which is to, to deal with your troubles without complaining to creation. And this is as an individual. This isn't obviously, if you're being oppressed, then you can, you know, go to, the Prophet went to Bani Thaqif for help. So it's not, it doesn't mean that you, you don't try to get rid of your situation or get allies or help, but you don't, it's not about complaining, it's about looking for maharaj, right? And so, and so uh, this is the point when he has this experience. So at the, at the, when, when, the, when in the dunya he's at the lowest point of his mission, Allah takes him to the highest pinnacle of his experience. And it's quite stunning. So then he says, go back. And so he keeps going back, and, and they say the reason this was to honor him so that the, the ability to have this intercourse with his Lord uh, was, was so extraordinary. So finally he got it down to uh, five prayers. Um, قد, you know, he tells them, بَلَوْتُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَخَبَرْتُهُمْ you know, I, I uh, tested Bani Israel. I tried them, and they couldn't keep up with their prayers. Make it easy for my ummah. So it goes until he gets down to five, but each one has the weight of, of uh, 10. So it's equivalent to 50 prayers. And that's why every good deed in our ummah gets 10. This is from our Prophet's um, uh, this is his intercession but he did do according to Sidi Ahmed Zarruq he did 50 rakats every day so he did 17 in the in the fard and then he did 33 uh, that he was consistent with he, sometimes he did more but he was always consistent with 50 so uh, he, the 2 for shuruq 6 for duha 4 for dhuhr 2 after dhuhr four for Asr, two for Maghrib, three for Isha, the Shafa and Witr, uh, and then uh, eight for Tahajjud, and then two for Fajr. So those are the 33 with the 17. So he did 50 rakats every day. So, so uh, So then he said, Ya Muhammad, inna huna khamsu sarawatan li kulli yawman wa layla, li kulli saratan ashrun, fa tirka khamsuna salat, wa man hamma bi hasanatan, fa lam ya'malha, kutibat lahu hasanatan, wa man, fa in amilaha, kutibat lahu hasanatun, fa in amilaha, kutibat lahu ashra, wa man hamma bi sayyatin, fa lam ya'malha, lam tuktab shay'a, فَإِنْ عَمِلَهَا كُتِبَتْ سَيِّعَةً وَاحِدًا فَنَزَلْتُ حَتَّى انْتَهَيْتُ إِلَى مُوسَى فَأَخْبَرْتُهُ فَقَالَ اِرْجِعْ إِلَى رَبِّكَ فَاسْأَلْهُ التَّخْفِيفِ فَقُدْتُ قَدْ رَجَعَتُ إِلَى رَبِّي حَتَّى اسْتَحِيتُ مِنْهُ So, so this is one of the soundest of the transmissions. Um, and this shows you the centrality of the prayer because here's the highest... Uh, spiritual experience to date that the Prophet has, and it's when the prayers come. So Mecca, the period of Mecca, which is 13 years, the period of Mecca is a period of aqidah. It's a period where there's, uh, there's you know, a real tathbit of, of their understanding. That's why if you look at the Meccan revelations, they're very powerful. إِذَا الشُّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدْرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَارُ سُيِّرَتْ you know, they're very strong, uh, uh, you know, what's coming down in Mecca is, is, is wa wa ma You know, they're very powerful. Uh, 
in Mecca, there's a transition to the Sharia. So the Me Mecca is Haqiqa, Medina is Sharia. And these are the two, this is the bifocal vision that every Muslim has to have. So Sharia, there's Dhulm in Sharia. In Haqiqa, there's tribulation. Right? So whenever you're Madhulm, it's really Ibtila from Allah. Sharia, it's Dhulm. But in Haqiqa, it's Ibtila. So when you look with the Ayn of Haqiqa, it's much easier for you to deal with the dunya. If you always look with the eye of Sharia, uh, dunya becomes a very difficult place. Because it's just filled with dhulm. But if you see it as ibtila, what, what am I meant to learn from this? What, what does this mean for me? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala To test you, to see which of you is the best in action. اُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ When Allah said, to Bani Israel, right? About uh, Fir'aun and his people. يسومركم سوى العذاب يذبحون أبناءكم يستحيون نساءكم وفي ذلكم براء من ربكم عظيم. Pharaoh was from Allah. Pharaoh wasn't from Pharaoh. Allah says it was a tribulation from Allah. He didn't say إن ذلك براء من فرعون عظيم. He said it was from Allah. So whenever you see tribulation in the world, see your Lord first and foremost with the ayn of haqiqah. It doesn't mean that they're not responsible and they're not valimun. They are. And Allah will take them to account. On the yom tuksabu kullu nafsan bima kasabat. Right? Every soul is, gonna, is going to uh, have what it earned. Right? So, so, so that's something to remember because the Prophet said, you know, what happens on this night is just so amazing. The amazing journey. SubhanAllah. All those things the Prophet said saw. Um, and, and when he came back, I mean, Abu Bakr gives also the greatest answer. When, when they say, oh, did you hear? They, they're always looking, like now, they're always looking, they always try to find something about the Muslims, Quran, you know, like these, these people say, oh, we, we discovered these, these uh, uh, palimpsests in, in, in Yemen, and oh, the Quran, it's not really what it, what it originally was. You know, they're always looking for something, grabbing onto something. Oh, we just discovered this, they say, oh, the, the Qibla wasn't really to Mecca, it's actually to, to Petra in Jordan. <laughs> I mean, ridiculous things, but they're always trying to get something. So that's the way the Kuffar, they always like that. You know? so, they, so they go to Abu Bakr, because he's obviously, ah, did you hear the latest? Like the, you know, they think, oh, we finally got him. He's going to say, oh, that's absurd. Nobody could go to Jerusalem <laughs> in, in one night. And, and, and he just said, in qadahu fasadaq. If he said it, so in other words, I'm not going to trust you bringing me this news because he's not a thiqa, right? In ja'akum fasiqun bi nabi'an fatabayyanu. And in a qira'a sab'iya fatathabbatu. Tabayyanu, know what's being said. Tathabbatu, make sure the source is sound, that it really was said, right? Like the internet. Internet, there's no tabayyan and there's no tathabbut. The internet is, you know, there's a very interesting story about the internet that um, Herzog, who is a documentarian, he did a, he did a, um, he did a documentary on the internet, and he actually said, uh, uh, the very first word that came across the internet, uh, they were writing L-O-G, log, you know, because you had to do that in the old days. And, and it crashed on low. Low and behold. So, so in, in that film that he did on the internet, there, there's a, a, a family who their daughter died in a horrific accident and her head was cut off and it was dangling. And people took pictures, you know, the people, they call them looky-loos, you know, people who slow down in a traffic to kind of 
when they see a traffic accident, they slow down to kind of see a mangled body. And, uh, and uh, so, so people took pictures of their daughter, and then they would send them the pictures. But the, 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 the amazing scene in that documentary is this woman, and I think, you know, I think antaqaha Allah. She said, I really believe the spirit of the Antichrist is in the internet. And it just brings out the worst in human beings. And when you look at the internet, you look at the filth on it, and you look at all of the, the you know. And I look, I'm, you know, I, I look up things on the internet all the time. I use, you know, these search engines are amazing. I mean, the type of research that you can do now, because uh, we grew up without, you guys didn't, but we grew up, we, we're, the old people here, there's only two of us. Everybody else is young. But, but the old people here, we, we had to actually look up books. And, you know, we, we have these hadiths of where you'd have to look up in the, these books of, like, Brokelman, you know. Did you, you probably had Brokelman. Yeah, exactly. You have to look up the Atraf and hadith. It would take so long just to find a hadith. Now you could just put in a few words from it, and, it'll give, and then it gives you the number. And, and then, you, you know, you can go to your your physical book and just look it up. Don't ever take it from that. Always check it with the book, by the way. And, and I'm, I really mean that because they're, they're not trustworthy. But anyway, but I just thought that was such an interesting statement, you know, just the demonic. There is a, something really, really dark about. I mean, it's called the web, the World Wide Web. The Arabs call it... Uh, you know, this worldwide spider's web. That's how they, how they did the ta'rib. Like Allah says, the, those who take gods beside Allah are like the spider that takes a web. And surely the weakest of houses is the the house of the spider. This whole system is so weak now. I mean, they're talking, Davos was talking about a global crash, like saying 2024, we're going to have a global crash of the whole web. And who knows? I don't know. But it's a fragile system. You know, your banking, if, 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 the, if the computers go out, all your money in the bank's gone. Right? And I know this from dealing with... Uh, uh, identity theft because I helped a, a widow get her money back and it was it was really hard because they did it all through comp these hackers you know a lot of them are Muslim you know apparently w one of the great contributions of Muslims to the modern world is the computer virus that was invented by a Muslim We were the builders, and now we're the destroyers. Mm. Anyway, we should pray. Huh? Okay. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruku wa atubu ilayk, wa al-asri anna l-insana la fi khusr illa al-lazina amun wa amiru salihati wa tuasubu al-haqqi wa tuasubu al-salam.